I think that's a great way to start any video. <laughs> it's like uh, just fucking about, you know, thinking, uh, thinking I, I, I look like a statue at the start. You know, just casually move forward and just not prepared for instant death. Uh, displacement. Oh god, this is great. <laughs> Death by displacement. How how does it keep happening? It's it's just this area. This was a really really tough area to get through. It's just one of those where if you can figure out a path to run through, you, you absolutely should. Um, you don't benefit at all by taking it slow. It reminds me um, of that area on the way to Ancient Dragon in Dark Souls 2. I think there's always one like this where it's just it's full of enemies that are just you know everything can be considered a uh, late game. And you know that as soon as you're in an area like this that uh every by displacement again. Every every single enemy being as strong as what they are is a strong indication that there's, you know, some some end game optional hell is gonna be uh, beyond, and you know it'll—it's always going to be optional as well. They're never going to have the story-driven areas uh, guarded by absolute monsters all the way up. I mean, the closest thing I can think of by comparison is like the Black Knights, I suppose, uh, in Dark Souls One that were guarding Gwyn. But let's face it—you could just run past all of those, with no problem whatsoever. Um, but this area did, you know, all the way through. It felt like uh, it really wanted you to be methodical in order to break through. So it was a challenge. But uh, yeah, more of the Scarlet White stuff. To be honest, I, I could have happily just gone past all of this, but uh, I kept feeling like I needed to just make sure that everything was dead, every every significant boss, in case there was any items tied to these enemies. Fighting this thing here though is a bit, a little bit tricky. Trying to find the right spells that I could just abuse with the scenery and use it more to my advantage than, um, than to its advantage and obviously it struggles to get past a little bit of this pillar but I'm just trying to find a way to uh, manipulate it just right. It's, it's just got a few attacks where it sort of dives and can catch you. Um, I'm trying to bait out those attacks where it, it, you know it doesn't find its way around, but it sometimes it just does. It doesn't always get stuck. Like, I think here you can see it sort of climbed itself a little bit up the ledge, so it'll be able to get around soon. But you know, if we could just hold it in place, it takes a lot of damage. You're just never sure when it's going to get itself free. And then when it does hit you, obviously, because it's a, a larger mob, it will just send you flying. So you go right off the top. There you go, it's got through. Like, you never know when that's coming. And once it's actually on the ledge with you, it's like, right, okay, can't really stay here. Sort of need to rotate to another part. You almost need to bait it back into the part that you were previously at. I don't remember... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what action I took to get it to pause there, that's strange programming. So if it if it hits me there I'm just off, I'm just dead again. And I I've dealt with a lot of that. I have a lot of real stupid deaths to this thing. But it's again it's like it's it's an enemy I've beat multiple times. I always find these relatively tricky, but this is just purely because it can knock you off. Um, you know, never mind the fact that the uh, all of the scarlet stuff is supposed to be the uh, the added level of difficulty. Clearly, because the, the safer play is to just fight it in the middle. But um, you know, I'm a caster. If I can avoid being close to it, I'm going to take that, that option. But it comes at the risk of getting knocked off. So you know, it's the trade-off that we take. Getting some use out of the mist spells here as well. If it's going to stick in an area, why not? Those, those were good sometimes. 
but it's if you can if you can get the enemy to just stay stationary. Sometimes it happens. It, that works often better with a big hitbox enemy, but obviously anything you can get to just stay stationary is fine. So all these little bastards everywhere. I had no problem killing these things. I loved loved killing these things. I just feel like they're uh, they're just something that you want to die. And then this was probably fun to get to this part. Now I've got 193,000 souls on me there. And they were all just child's play up until this point. And then that that one killing me, it was like, oh god. I'm going to... Uh, I'm potentially going to lose everything now. And, uh, I remember fighting back just to get them was, uh, was a bit of pain. I remember thinking, get him, Chad Pumpkinhead. And he's like really tanking and holding some of the most obnoxious enemies in the game back. But little did I know, I've, I've literally got what is the first boss you want to fight behind me. Oh, here we go. And I have never known defeat. Can I just say, what a fucking sick introduction to what is definitely the best boss of hell. She was just, she was so strong, but she's a, she's a cool encounter. I, I love everything about her, I love her armor. Um, you know, the serious Sephiroth vibes, like just standing there with a long blade. The, the fact that so much of the kit is just, it, it's, it is reasonably fair, but like everything but like the waterfowl dance things, like uh, uh, you know, you can handle it. But obviously, you have to get my massive to me a bit a few times. I I think I tried it for about an hour, and I was just like, you know what? I will come to this later after I've dealt with everything else, because there is just there's no way I'm gonna. Uh, be able to beat her until I've got all of the all of the uh, rest of the tools available. And I figured that I'd definitely deal with a few more stats. So you know, this is another one of those bosses where uh, it's like, okay, these weird things that like hang there or something. Uh, again, I I remember it, but it's just I don't know, all of these. All of the spells that these guys have. It's like there's a few different weird like space uh, bug alien type things. I don't even know really categorize them as. But uh There's some pretty interesting spells. I don't feel like these guys were that strong though. Like occasionally when one of these spells hits you it's like you do just die but I don't know, I never felt the pressure. Like, even when it's attacking you directly, uh, I don't know. Um, I was more likely to accidentally dodge roll into something than if I just, you know, just strafed and uh, let it go for me, really. But it's taking a lot of damage, it's, it's got stuns twice, like, you know, maybe it's because I'm just free casting something that's got a lot of power to it, but didn't. It felt the complete opposite to how Melania felt then when I just get obliterated right away. But uh, yeah, just adding more and more spells to the book. Here you can see my stats again. So you can see I'm getting uh, quite robust. 80 intelligence, you see. 30 decks now, so a certain amount of speed. So, as you can see, no fog wall. Uh, I'm thinking this is a boss room.
Mikola. You must abide alone a while. Welcome, honored guest, to the birthplace of our dynasty. Yeah, so, uh, that was like. I immediately am just reacting to this thinking. Whatever is in that egg held its arm up then. And that's, you know, Melania's blade of Nicola. So whoever that bitch is, is 100% gonna be in the DLC. And is gonna be some fucking nightmarish hell. You know, the Madeir, the bloody, you know, Slave Knight Gale of, uh, of Elden Ring. Um, I can't wait. It's going to be one. one of the reasons why I wanted to leave um, Elden Ring off for, for so long is two reasons. One, I wanted to make sure that it was patched to a point where it was balanced and everything was fair. There were no easy bypasses with overpowered spells. But the second reason was uh, I wanted to be closer to the DLC release, which I figure if you give it sort of 12 months time, you're probably going to be close to it. Uh, it still hasn't dropped, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking Elden Ring is still relatively fresh in my mind. If it came out tomorrow, I'd still be, uh, I'd be ready. But we'll see. So, Mob Lord of Blood. This is supposed to be another one of the end of the zone uh, bosses. So, you know, I was excited to get into this, but. I've already took a load of damage because it's my first try and I've got no idea what the fuck is coming and just, just guessing with the dodge rolls, someone is already dead. Blasting, blasting, blasting. Maybe he's, he's not killing me. I'm thinking, you know, maybe I've, you know, I've, I've got lucky. I've, I've about got enough health now so I started pulling points into health so I can actually deal with uh, Melania. But it's just not the uh, it's just not the high end challenge I was expecting. I think maybe more magic helps here, but you know. Uh, yeah, that wasn't wasn't the uh, the scariest final uh, encounter for his own encounter. So yeah, back to Melania now. So this little spell I had a little bit of fun with this. Now, one of the one of the problems is obviously finding a way to engage Melania with low risk. Now, this is a quick cast spell, but uh, and you know, it's really likely to actually hit her, and she, it's unlikely that she's going to dodge it because it's so delayed. It can be coming from any angle, but you can keep just casting them as many as you want. Now, I found this was a really consistent way to deal damage, and I would have been happy to use this tactic all the way through. The problem is, um, you don't do enough damage to her. Like, I can't remember if she's got a bit of life steal in her kit or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, you're just not doing enough damage. You know, it is a consistent way to attack. It might be a you know a sensible way to do some damage in PvP, but yeah, the spell is let down by the fact that it definitely needs a upgraded uh, counterpart. You know, maybe something, um, maybe something, you know, for a different, uh, like in a different school, or maybe just an empowered version. But yeah, she's life stealing so much back off me. It doesn't matter that I'm doing consistent damage; it's just not high enough damage. It's like the classic sort of uh, life steal boss problem. If you're just not doing enough damage, or haven't got a way to. Uh, Mitigate, you know, create some anti-heal or something like that. You're just never going to be able to uh, beat them because they're just sustaining too well. By the scarlet rot. So by now, I, you know, I'd phased her quite a few times and. That second phase was just absolute pain, and then when I finally realised uh, 
you know, there was the the best way to like sort of avoid that damage is to either have your summon tank it or you know just stay as far away from her as possible and hope you get lucky. It was like okay, so that's fine, but I still need a way to get through the first phase clean and do enough damage so that I'm actually getting there. So, you know, I've got to admit it, I have to look it up. You need some frost damage, like most of your magic damage isn't doing shit because she's just got reasonable uh, defense to it. So frost is the way to go. My fashion souls is out the window. Snow hat increases uh, the amount of frost damage I'm doing. The uh, staff, uh, I think, increases the amount of magic damage done. Um, at the cost of additional mana or something like that, but yeah, between that and uh, Black Nartish, obviously he he's actually a little bit good at knocking her down, and then he can put the debuff on her for a load of extra damage. Which is kind of what you want. You want the pressure. Um, and although he is a little bit of a crutch, to be honest, this this started to feel like the first phase was fair, and then in the second phase, it's like I'm. You know, she just becomes such a stronger boss um, that without some way to stagger her, you just, I just don't know what you're supposed to do otherwise. Because if you if you don't use everything at, like at your disposal to do the damage you need to to her, like, here you go. So these little things coming at you, I really struggle to dodge all of them. But realizing that if you have enough distance, you've actually got a chance. But at this point, I need. I need my mana back and I need to be free casting on her as much as possible. Um, or I need to be distracting her and Black Martiche needs to be contributing something. But he won't last long. Like if she starts laying into him, he, he's just going to get torn to pieces anyway. So, you know, one of us has got to be heavy DPS. And then he gets the knockdown and then it's an opportunity to do a huge amount of damage. But then she goes up and I'm immediately just scared. So the stab attack isn't too bad, but if she does that waterfowl, I'm fucked. So if you've been watching the health bars at the bottom, you'll uh, have noticed that at one point I did get it down to about a quarter, and then she regained it all the way back up near enough to uh, when she starts phase two. Just life steal off like a combination of me and the summon. But that's why you need so much damage is what you need and the, the potential for staggers between you and your summon. Because she just regains so much health, it's like her effective health will just starts again. Um, you know, there's no way to do this with low damage input unless you're never ever getting hit, or you can guarantee that the summon doesn't get hit either. Um, which is just highly unlikely because the AoE nature and the speed of the attacks. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> You need a burst potential between you and your summon, which it really helps if they've got a stagger. So I think other options will be viable for that fight, but that is, you know, that is definitely the way that I found to do it. And of course, I wore the armor afterwards because, you know, that that boss really spoke to me. That was such a great encounter, and it fit really well with my uh, astrologer's like cloak as well. So. It was a really good look for my transition into the end game and engine plus and beyond.
I've given thee courtesy enough. So basically now this guy is Heihachi. <laughs> yeah, classic Tekken grab. That is uh like <laughs> this this is just Heihachi man. Like this how how is that not what this is? This is just turned into a fighting game. I don't really think there's a lot to say about Rogan. He's alright, you know, some of his stuff is difficult to dodge, but, you know, just a classic win. Now the fact that they put this thing at the end, uh, you know, this is the, the final encounter, I think, uh, you know, we should have had the horse. Great that it's got a huge hitbox, I again had an opportunity to use loads of my spells that uh, hit huge um, huge hitboxes as long as I can get right underneath them. Although, because this thing is so stationary for so long, I found anything that you can get underneath it with, uh, that does a lot of power, if you, if you can just pull it, you know, pull it off. Uh, by positioning yourself so that even if it turns around to swipe you it won't hit you you can get a lot of damage off I later found out down the line that uh, one spell that I'd put off like finishing a quest line for um, it's like one of the sorcerer's spell like it's like two uh, it's it's like two like spears that I drill and because of the way that it works if it hits a, uh, a target, um, if it's a target with a large hitbox, it just keeps going through it. And periodically, if it's still within the target's hitbox, it just keeps doing damage. So something that's this fast, if it catches it just right and it's following it in the same path that it's moving, it just keeps hitting it like again and again and again, and it does so much damage. Um, it literally dominates this boss. But I think at this point. I didn't even know that that spell was around, and I just ended up like using just you know found a rain of stars I think, to beat this. But uh, yeah, there's there's so many good ways to beat this. Again, my greatest weakness uh, into this encounter is not being able to see past visual effects. I don't know why this personally is such a challenge for me. But yeah, being able to dodge those. Uh, those like light discs that are coming towards you just through the um, through all of the other gold stuff again I don't know why it's it's so difficult for me to be able to just see past them but that is more or less why this boss is even a challenge because I mean this stuff where it drops the other wings like hey run out past it dodge through that dodge through that Okay, got the time run. Dodge again. Okay, gonna get hit by the whole ability. Okay. So, it becomes a case of attrition because you don't master that. So you are gonna run out of health flasks. And that does become annoying because you spend 60% of this fight trying to close the distance down. 
And then it just comes and tries to swipe you anyway, so it's it's sort of closing the distance. So maybe it'll be better just trying to dodge them and waiting for it to come in. I tried that a few times, and then you find out that it actually just keeps blasting you with ranged attacks anyway, so you've still got to close the distance. Which is just annoying, it's not, you know, it's not challenging closing the distance, because you've just got to get used to uh, dodging the attacks on the way in. It just feels like a bit of a time waste. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to just spend all of my time running. It's well frustrating, I imagine it's worse for builds that have no stamina. I've always got something on to greatly increase my stamina region rate because, like I say, no uh, inaction equals death. It's always the way in these games. The battle is over, I see. I do solemnly swear to every living being and every living soul. Now cometh the age of the stars. A thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Here beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. into fear, doubt, and loneliness, as the path stretcheth into darkness. Well then, shall we? My fair consort eternal. Oh, eternal bay. I will do whatever you ask. <laughs> well, there you have it. Technically, game over. But, uh, you know. There's still a few more things, obviously, I've got to wrap up, you know, there's still a whole chapter after this, um, but yeah, it's just basically uh, everything that I missed. So by this point, obviously, now, if I, uh, I thought I'd found everything, um, you know, to the best of my ability, I was quite surprised, you know, finding the odd, like, you know, this, this is one of the earlier death birds as well, that I missed. So I just looked up, uh, what did I do? I like looked up all of the rings, I always like to make sure I've got all of the rings because rings usually have like unique effects in Souls games and I uh, just went through every single ring and I was like, do I have this, do I have this, do I have this? Um, and then uh, for all the ones I didn't have, then I just you know looked up the boss that drops it and then you know the associated dungeon and went and found them all to go get them. And that was how I closed up the game, basically. Um, which is always great if you want to go through like another playthrough, like NG Plus, anything like that. Uh, obviously, there were all these items that I wanted to get for uh, like a platinum, but you know, there's going to be all these items as well that are tied in, which is 
can be really beneficial. Sometimes you've got like real unique items with special effects. I mean, all of the ones that are stat sticks, where you've got like plus one, two, and three versions of them, aren't really that important. But the ones that have like some real like unique effects, like something like health regeneration, or maybe they're like weight reduction. But in essence, this is just the last few things that I missed. Um, the completion section of the game.